Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the latest episode of Sausage on a Fork, and I am absolutely delighted to say that I have been joined for this episode by none other than Kim Benson, who played Mary Johnson. Kim, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Well, thank you very much. I'm I'm very pleased to be here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. What we'll do, Kim, is we'll start the way we start every episode. And if you can tell us how you first got into acting. Um, I went to a place called the Anisher Children's Theatre in right. Islington, London. Yeah. And it was just somewhere that you went and did drama after school. It was right. like, uh, you know, and it was a hobby. Me. All right. okay. I just went after school. I made lots of friends and lots of casting directors came down. Not because we, we, we didn't go there to really become famous actors or anything like that. Uh-huh. It, we just went there because we enjoyed doing drama right. after school. Okay. And so was there anyone at Anna Shares with you that we might know, we might have heard of? You're going to know lots of people that were Anna Shares. Right. So there was Kathy Burke. There was um, people like, um, well, Linda Robson was older than me, but she was uh, um, Anna Shares with me. Uh-huh. Um my brother actually went Anna Scherz as well. I don't know if anyone knows him. Perry Benson, he was in, he's in lots of things. Yeah. And um, there was Phil Daniels, good friends, and Ray Burdis, Mark Burdis, who was in yeah. Grangeville as well, played uh-huh. Stuart. He was, it, I, he used to walk home with me. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, he's younger than me. I used to make sure he came home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There's, there was lots of people that went to Anna Scherz and come through in the 70s because they they wanted kind of real kids at yeah. that time. And that's what they were looking for. So yeah. Dexter Fletcher actually went there as well. He was, you know, and his brothers too. So, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So, so you said it was a it was a hobby, you know, it wasn't like you, you wanted to be, to be you know, famous or, or anything like that. So then how did, like, the television thing sort of come about for you then? Well, um, obviously the uh, casting agents come in. Phil Redmond wrote um, wrote Grange Hill. Uh-huh. I think he actually came down because he did write something else after it uh, right. called Going Out that they filmed in. I think it was in Southampton or it was like anyway. Yeah. Uh, he did this thing called Going Out, and um, he actually gave it to a few of us to read I, oh, and nice. I read it and gave my comments on it how did did I think it was real or not and I was like oh no it's brilliant and I could see who'd get cast in it and he actually ended up casting my brother in this going wow. out yeah because my brother was like four years older than me it was like funny so Phil Red- Redmond had obviously come down to Anna Scherz he, he was like looking for real kids uh-huh. and um so and then um, I think it was Anna Hume and Colin Cant uh-huh. auditioned us or saw us. And, and the next thing I know, I was invited round to um, Highbury to this house and with lots of kids. And we was all there and they told us we all had a part. And, right. and it was like, you've got a big part, you've got a small part. And that's how it began for me. And I was there right at the beginning with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, oh, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, so like, so you were there. You were there right from the inception of yeah. you know of, of the program. Yeah, um, and as you say, we you you played Mary Johnson, and we didn't see Mary until sort of towards the end of the the first series. Really, it was when Mary f- first got you know speaking parts, and because there was only nine episodes in the first series as well whereas in all the others there was either 20 or, or 18 episodes the first wow. episode was yeah. like quite quite small in comparison and and as you've said there you were there in the early days with the likes of Tucker, Trisha, Doyle or all, all, all these uh, yeah yeah Benny yeah all these people that yeah, became Benny, sort of yeah. household names really really quickly yeah as well and Mary I don't know if you, if you can remember this. Mary became Ann Wilson's campaign manager when Ann Wilson wanted to be on the school council. And yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, 
But they didn't have any much. They didn't have much luck at first with the lads because the lads wanted to vote for a lad called Adrian, just because he wanted to ban cricket and rugby. Um, you know, <laughs> you know the the heart of any good political manifesto, banning those, banning those things. And he also gave them sweets as well. So that was another way of them, you know, enticing them in. So after, well, that- yeah, yeah. And then, so after speaking to Mr. Mitchell, the girls came up with a, a new game plan because they thought about the sweets idea. So they came up with the idea of getting a tuck shop in. Sorry. Um, <laughs> did, did they? <laughs> and M- Mary, we, we, all, you know, she was obviously Anne's campaign manager, but there was a little bit of subterfuge going on because Mary put up a poster in support of Anne. And right next to it, there was a poster in support of Adrian. So can you guess what Mary did or can you remember what Mary did? I can't remember, but I'm sure she just took it down. Exactly that, yeah. (laughs) Started taking it down. And there's another scene where Mary accidentally bumps into one of the lads um, and he drops all his stuff. And so Mary and Anne are like, oh, we're really sorry. We'll help you pick your stuff up. And Trisha Yates goes around the back of this lad. And they gave, they gave him all his stuff. He walks off. But Trisha Yates has stuck a poster to the back of this lad <laughs> in support. In support of, of Anne in that one. Well, the girls, you see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it can only have been down to Mary's uh, brilliant uh, campaign man- manager well, strategies. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Now, when the results were counted, unfortunately, Anne didn't win. Anne came second in the vote. But it all turns out that she lost by one vote to a lad called David Robinson. But it turned out that Robinson, along with Michael Doyle, good old, good old Mickey Doyle, um, oh, yeah. had, had, <laughs> been, had been bullying people in, into voting for him. So they only went and did the the correct thing that Grange Hill could, could do and awarded the the election victory to Anne Wilson. So Mary's campaign and did actually come off by default. Good. <laughs> as, as, as Homer Simpson says, default, the two greatest words in the English language. See? No. Anyway, I'm destined <laughs> to be in politics now. <laughs> <laughs> so... There was an episode where, I don't even remember this, there was going to be like a school festival and there was all sorts of things getting planned and there was, you know, all sorts of things going on. And a, f- a couple of flintlock pistols had been loaned to the school. I don't even remember this. I don't remember. I'm really sorry. But it's it all right. No. Ago, I don't remember. It's, 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 not a, it's not a problem. So a couple of flintlocks had been loaned to the school for the festival. And one of them was stolen. And it had been stolen by our old friend Doyle again. And Tucker knew that he would take had, had taken it. And, and Doyle wouldn't admit it. Now, the festival was on the verge of being cancelled because of oh. this. And Trisha had heard Tucker telling Benny that Doyle had taken it. Trisha spoke to Anne and uh, Mary about it. And they decided to do something about it. They didn't know what they could do. So Mary suggested, basically suggested sending Doyle to Coventry, you know, and having nothing to do with him and and let him know that they knew it was him. But he still wouldn't know it up, right? So Tucker and his mates gave Doyle a beating. Now, you might think, why am I talking about Tucker and Doyle all the time when it's about Mary Johnson? So we need to tell you about this. Your brother, Perry Benson, is in a very, very famous... Grange Hill spoof on the young oh, ones. He was oh, yeah. in the young ones with, with Ben Elton. Yeah. And there's a line in that where Ben Elton says, come on, say, we're not that bad. We're the only kids in Britain who never say, you know. <laughs> yeah. When I was researching your, your, your character's stories, in the scene where the lads grab him to give him a beating, the word is very, very audible. Oh. <laughs> you can hear so much. <laughs> 
to be honest, the more I listen to it, the more I'll, think, I'll, I'll stop being fast, but he basically, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it's yeah. the line that comes up. So I just, you know, I just thought I'd throw that one in there. As I say, when, as, when Perry was in The Young Ones, that was the scene that he was in. And he was in Brain Jill as well. He, he, he played was in Brain Jill. Of, yeah, he was in the first episode, I think, and he just played a little part in it. As yeah. an old boy in Brain Jill. He has yeah. a conversation with Benny Green, Terry Schumann. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, remember that bit, yeah. So in the end, as I say, the, the lads give give Doyle a beating and the flintlock uh, miraculously <laughs> is handed back in uh, and the festival <laughs> the festival goes ahead now there's another bit where Trisha Yates hadn't gone into school and Mr Mitchell asked Anne to go and see if you know go around to her house and see if she was she was there and when she got there Trisha's Trisha's mum was under the impression that she was still at school, so Anne never said anything. But then Anne's talking to Mary about it. And Mary and Anne are overheard by Mr. Mitchell because Mary says, you need to come up with something because old Mitch is bound to ask. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I am. What, are, what, 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 what am I bound to ask? And then that series finished. So the series, series one was only nine episodes. And it finished at half, at half term. And it's really strange because series two started and the kids were still in the first year. Whereas later on, they grew up, you know, they went a year by year. It's really series two carries on that year. But I want to know, was was there a time when you realised how big Grange Hill had become? I, I um, Probably not the first series. Right. Probably... Um... When I sort of left, ah, right, so when I was about thirteen, and just everybody, you know, was coming up to me and talking to me about it, but and and sort of because it was hated by was it Mary Whitehouse? There was yeah. like some people that hated it, so you yeah. knew it was doing something good, yeah. you know. And it was a it was a breakthrough program. Yeah. It was like about real life, really. Yeah. It really dealt with real life problems. It was a real change for children's television yeah but i think that's probably why there was only nine because it wasn't it wouldn't have been commissioned for more than nine right. at the beginning you yeah. see because i have to see whether it works so that's why nine and then and that was how things were made then as well like yeah. now you, you have to make like 12 at least i think uh-huh. right for television yeah. companies now but back then no right. really uh six or seven uh-huh in other programs I did when I was sort of younger, yeah. you know, because yeah. the the C- series two was 1979, but around that time there was another program that you'd made called Kids. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, I that, that seemed like when I read the, the synopsis on that, that seemed like a really really good idea. It was basically it was the life of kids, but yeah. sort of based on real stories. Yeah, if I remember. I was in a children's home. So oh, I, right. you know, that's the one. I only did one. I think I was only in one episode. Yeah, I think it was one episode. And so, it was an episode called Michael and Liam. Yeah. And you played, so, a, you played a character called Sophie in that one. Yeah. I was, and, you know, I was young because, you know, um, I actually filmed that. I went over and rehearsed in Chelsea. And I just remember getting on the bus and feeling like I was going miles away yeah. to do this job. You know, as a kid, you're like, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Naomi Campbell was in that episode. Was she? Well. Well, <laughs> yeah. There you go. You see, you're fair. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> um, and she actually turned up in an episode of Green Jill a few years later as well. So yeah, so the, the second series started. You were in the second series a lot more mm. um, than you have been in, in the first series. And as I say, they were still first years, and. At this point, Anne Wilson had left, but the official story, it's weird, the official story is that she just moved form classes. We just never saw her again. That was the official story. And there was a new headmaster. Mr Llewellyn was there. It had been Mr Mm -hmm. Starling beforehand. And it was his idea to change the the kids in the form classes round. And it was Mary who said uh, she thought it was a good idea because they could mix 
and make new friends and meet people who lived in the same area. She obviously <laughs> believed the spin that the, that the school had given her. No, we, you know, we, we, I've just mentioned Lu, Lucinda Duckett and we talked about Mary and, and, and Trisha, but was there anyone who you were sort of really sort of best friends with or, or close to when you were filming? When, well, really, it was Michelle Herbert was my friend. I was right. close to her. And also um, one of the ladies called Abigail Brown was oh, one yeah. of the ones who yeah. played, what did she play? Judy Preston. Judy Preston, yeah. yeah. So yeah. she was one of my friends and obviously and Terry Sue Pat because yeah. he was one of my mates. I, we all used to go out after, you know, uh-huh. um, uh, well, we was all earning money from Grain Chill, so we all had money to go out and yeah. go out. To, we shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. When I was <laughs> older, when I was like, 40, yeah. yeah, we all used to go out together. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. brilliant, yeah. brilliant. And was there anyone that, like you, you said you fed, but was there anyone that you really enjoyed working with or having scenes with, anything like that? Well, I enjoyed, you know, I just enjoyed doing Grain Chill because uh-huh. it was fun. I didn't, it wasn't like an acting job for me. Yeah. It was just like fun. It was with like loads of kids. We'd all have like, we'd all have a great laugh together, uh-huh. you know, and we were all getting paid as well. It was like brilliant. It was like, yeah. this isn't work, yeah. you know, and it was like, <laughs> you know, and no, so I'd, I, I have to say, you know, I liked Todd Carty. He was always fun. He would always tease, tease yeah. us. Right. We, we used to do rehearsals at Baden Powell House. Oh, Baden right. Road. So that was yeah. yeah. And um and then we used to film I mean originally it was I don't know later on where it was filmed, but when I did it, it was a um television centre at White City. So uh-huh. in, then there was a school that was actually in a place for I'm sure it was in Grange Park or somewhere like right. that school was that we used to film. Uh-huh. You know, we used to get bus together, so we were like all kids. We was all tormenting each other. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So, and yeah. Uh, you know, we we've, we've talked about Mr. Mitchell, uh, played by Michael Percival. What was the relationship between the kids and the adults like? How did you find that? Didn't really have a lot to do with the right. adults. To be honest with you, yeah. I mean, I don't remember sort of having like making like big friends with the adults because uh-huh. we were just all like a little gang between ourselves really yeah um and i'm sure the they they all had the job but probably for all oh, these kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean the thing that at first you know the, the adults I, i've said this before we're, we're very much on the periphery where yeah. they, you know there was it was only sort of later on when they really started getting their own sorts of storylines. They were basically they were there to you know facilitate scenes and and move scenes along. Uh, I imagine most of the time. Yeah, anyway, that's true. Yeah, that is. True. Yeah. Okay. Now there'd been a, a story where there'd been talk of a, an attacker in the area, a strange you know a stranger danger storyline, and Madeline Tanner, the Ardnoch of, of the year group, had been telling everyone what she'd done once when she was when, when a bloke had gone for it and Mary called her a big mouth. Now I just what when I watched that I just thought, I tell you what, she's brave there to uh, to, to be taking on uh, Madeline Tanner. Like there's there's no way I would have said anything about Madeline Tanner. <laughs> no, not at all. Like and there was a bit I was trying to work this bit out where Mary was annoyed at herself because she'd brought her stuff in for day three of the timetable when it was day two. And that to me just seemed like a really strange way of saying I brought my stuff in for Wednesday when it's actually Tuesday. It, you know, yeah. I, I just <laughs> Well, I always thought that Mary was a bit like the way, you know, when I, I watched some of it back, um yeah. a while back when they first put it on, because I'd yeah. and I always thought she was she could be a bit dim sometimes. Yeah. She's a bit right. slow, you know. She you know, so um that's that's how I so I think that's how I played her when right. I was. Like, that's I how it. I saw the script as well. A bit yeah. like a bit yeah. slower than others, uh, and that's yeah. probably why she said something to that girl because she didn't really realize, <laughs> yeah. really like mean. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I I don't know if that's like a thing that school did with their timetables. You know, day one, day two. When I was at school, 
it was just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That was that was the timetables you were given. I know some schools do like two week timetables, so it might have been that. Uh, I just Maybe. I, I, you know I yeah. don't ask me. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you things that you know, and that's really terrible that I'm doing this with you. No, no, not not at all. Not at all. We, <laughs> Uh, not, not at all. So she hadn't done her homework, basically, was the outcome of this thing. Yeah. Um, and But she hoped Mr. Sutcliffe would forget because he normally did. Mr. Sutcliffe, another uh, James Wynn, another, another legend there. Like, um, But he didn't forget. He was, he was asking everyone. But the teachers then went on strike because Miss Summers had resigned. And when I say they went on strike, they did like a day walkout. Mm. So... They basically the school was was closed that day, and all the others said, "Oh, we're going to go out, we're going shopping. Are you coming, Mary?" And she was like, "No, I'm going to go home and do my own work." <laughs> yeah. She was a good girl, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah. She certainly was. And then Mary became a journalist for the school magazine, and she was trying to get stories for it. And she wanted to get a story from Trisha Yates about what it was like when she was part of the delegation of SAG, the Students Action Group, oh, um, yeah. when they've been called to Mr. Llewellyn's office about trying to get the school uniform abolished, but she didn't get much of a story from Trisha. Trisha just said, yeah, it was brilliant, it was dead good, and that was it. And she was like, well, I can't really <laughs> I, I can't I can't really put that in. So then, then she asked Kathy Hargreaves, now this is what you're saying there about Mary being a li- maybe being a little bit dim. So she then asked Kathy Hargreaves if she could write a story about her getting done for shoplifting. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. have, a, have a bit of tact, Mary, shall we? You yeah. know, <laughs> as I say, you know, she wasn't the most tactful person. No, she wasn't tactful. <laughs> no, no. That's what it was, yeah. But she was, you know. And then Kathy had said no because she she didn't think her mum would want that going in the school magazine. And I don't know where that story went. It wasn't really mentioned after that. But what I will say, on Series 2, if you watch Series 2 on BritBox hmm. or, or, or ITVX or Prime or whatever it's on now, Episode 14 of Series 2, Mary Johnson is the face of that episode. Really? So they have like... Yeah. Even, even though Mary's not in it that much, but Mary is the face of the of, of episode 14 in series two. So we'll move on then to series three, which was which was on air in 1918. You were only in two episodes yeah. in in this series. And it's the third year, as I say, second year's second year's been missed out. But and it was when there was no school uniform. School uniform was optional, basically, by, by this point. But Sudamani Patel was wearing her uniform, and Trisha had said, "Why are you wearing that?" And Sudamani says, "Well, my dad made me." And Trisha says to her, "Well, you should have put your foot down and told him that you wanted to wear what you wanted to wants to wear." But then Kathy pointed out that Trisha wasn't wearing jeans when she said she was going to wear jeans, and Trisha said, "My mum wouldn't let me." <laughs> Can you? Remember or guess what Mary then said to Trisha? No, I can't go on she, she basically <laughs> says to her what Trisha said to Sudamani, you should have put your foot down and told your mum <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you wanted to wear what you wanted to wear. The beginning of my comedy career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr Mitchell had left at this point and the girls were talking about who they hoped their form tutor would be. This then led to the girls talking about which teachers they fancied. Can I don't suppose can you remember who Mr. Who Mary said she fancied? No. <laughs> Out of all the male teachers, she said she fancied Mr. Baxter. Really? <laughs> no, I don't. It may have been tongue in cheek because she went, Yeah, I just think he's really sexy. And all the girls started laughing at that point. Now, in that series, there was fire in a science lesson. Hmm. Were you in the scene for that one? Can you remember being there for that one? Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose that's something you probably would remember as well. I um, think so. Yeah, I think, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, it was because I got to, um, I think I must have been about, how old was I then? I was about 13, 
but 13. I was about to do my O level, so I was Ah, in right. real life. Right, I want, yeah. I want to do my O levels. Right. Oh, I, now, the last, the last scene that we see, Mary, in Penny Lewis and Trisha Yates had a fight. Now, it's quite a, it's quite a famous one in Grange Hill. So Penny Lewis, played by Rudy Davis and, and Trisha Yates, have a fight. It's quite famous because they really go for it. Hmm. Can you remember much about that? And, uh, not really. Right. <laughs> okay. I, just, I don't really remember. I don't. Um, no, that's but, fair enough. I know. I, I told you, didn't I? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all I remember really when I did Grain Chill was that um, Michelle Herbert got um, had to be rushed to hospital one time because she had a pen, she had her appendix removed. Wow. So there was maybe when she was in it. Yeah, there was one <laughs> yeah. time she was. We was actually on the set. We was in the school, and everyone was like, "Where is she?" And wow. she was like, "In the," she had collapsed, and she had to be rushed to hospital. Right. And she had her appendix removed. Right. So that's the kind of thing I remember. But... Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, you, you you've said that you said earlier on about people started coming up to you after you'd left, sort of thing about asking you about Green Jill. What was the public reaction like to Mary Johnson? Well, I think, yeah, no one were hor was horrible to me right. for Mary Johnson because she wasn't, you know, she was a likeable character. Yeah. She wasn't sort of, she wasn't someone who was mean, like, I suppose, like Gripper or someone like that. Yeah. You know, you're, you're mean in something like that. People believe it yeah. when they're kids, don't they? I mean, yeah, definitely. I think everyone sort of wished they were in it. Sort of all my friends were like, oh, what's it like? You know, yeah. oh, what are they like? And oh, I wished I did that. You know, it was yeah. fun. That and I went to an ordinary school, you see. I didn't go to a stage school, so oh, I, right, okay. I went back. Like a lot of the, there was like many children who were in Grange Hill who did go to stage schools as well. Uh -huh. There was mix of everything. Yeah. But um, obviously I just went back to my normal school. So right. I've spoken to a few people who went to like comprehensives and high schools and, and things. And they said that it wasn't if they ever got grief at school, it wasn't usually from the kids. It was from the teachers. Oh wow! W w would yeah. give them stuff, but that obviously wasn't your your the case I for you. Still, I was quite sort of. I still like enjoyed doing all my studies, so right. I kept up with that. I was sort of in, in school. I never. Um, it wasn't like I went and did the. I did Grand Chill because we did have tutors on Grand yeah. Chill. But it wasn't like what you get and you know when you went yeah. back to school, you'd missed everything. Yeah. I, I kept up with it. So I didn't really have that problem when I went back with the teachers. They still sort of thought I was okay. But yeah. I probably, you know, so, um, but um, I can see how some people would because you yeah. come back in and you, you think that's not, this isn't what I want to do anymore. Yeah. I want to act because yeah. you now you've been in this adult world of, you know, in, uh -huh. in the working world, really. Yeah. Young age, you know. Yeah, so I mean, so that was the last time we saw Mary Johnson in in series three. So, whose decision was it for you to leave? It was mine because right. they asked me. They were going to write a bigger part, for, a bigger part for me. Oh, right. Okay. They had a story like that. You know, they said, "Do you want to do it?" And at the time, I didn't want to. I wanted to do my O levels because uh -huh. I wasn't sure that acting was my path actually yeah so i was like no well i've, I've had fun but i want to do my o levels i want to do my a levels and yeah and, uh, maybe go to university i mean uh, i never end up going to university and right. then but, you know i did do a levels and i i went on to do that and so yeah but i still did other act i still got yeah. every time i thought i'd go go to you know i applied for university that's when i got um the role in uh, two point four children. Ah, right, so okay. So many series, yeah. Brilliant, right? Because you, you you carried on acting after you'd left Grangeville, and did you just go to do your studies at school straight away, and then once you'd done your O levels, start acting, or were you doing it at the same time still? I still doing it at the same time, but it wasn't. You know, I had already. I know I'd done my O levels, and I did like I. Had, got a couple of other jobs but they didn't really interfere with studies you know yeah. because when you was a long commitment yeah and longer and longer and you'd be you know and you had to be out of school for a long time yeah so yeah. um 
and I was I I don't know maybe I should have stayed in it but I, you know like at that point I was like oh I don't know whether I want to do this but Yeah. Yeah. I'm pulled back into acting because people would offer me things I think well I might as well do that bit Yeah. Yeah. and Yeah. I was like oh yeah yeah Because <laughs> I, I, I've looked through your your acting CV and there's quite a few bits that you know I, I'd like to talk to you about because you were in Made in Britain with Yeah, I was, yeah. with Tim Roth. Now, Yeah, yeah, with Tim Ross. what? Was he as scary in real life as he looks in that film? Because No, he's a great actor, <laughs> Tim yeah. Ross. And and actually then he he did some he did a few stage plays with my brother actually. All So right. I got to know him better after you know, I was only in one scene in Made in Britain. We were Yeah. just in in the job centre, me and this other um actress. called Catherine Clark, actually, um, I went to Anna Schur's with. All And right. we were both in the scene and doing that that scene. And so and we only did the scene with him. So it wasn't like I had a lot to do with him because Right, he was I get you. part and he, you know, we were just had like these little parts in it. Yeah. But Um, we were you there when he threw the concrete slab through the window? no. <laughs> okay. Because I know I, 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 I No, watch because I haven't got any. No, I haven't got any. I watch I watched that scene quite a bit the other day. But you can see people in the background when he when he throws it through. So I was just wondering because it I think it's the window you had actually been standing in Yeah. Of course. here behind. <laughs> okay. And then you did an episode of Big Deal with Ray Brooks. Yeah, that was a yeah. We did that, and uh, I went up to Glasgow to do that. All And right. it was the first time I'd ever been in Glasgow, and I had a great time. Yeah. So Well, yeah. Teddy Sue Pat was in that episode. Yeah. Um Yeah, yeah. And Susan Tully is uncredited, apparently, uh, in that episode at some point as well. And then you did something called Paradise Postponed. Yeah, that was, I was just in a, um, uh, for that, I was in a petrol station. Right, because I was like, you know, who did you... who I have did a little, you... a little part in that, But yeah. who did, did you get to work with any of the main cast? Because when I looked at the names on the people, and you know, Michael Horton and the next Crosby and Zoe Wanamaker and David Telfor, it just seemed to be. No, they were they were yeah big. No, it was just I can't remember who come into the uh, Right. pet station. It was just one. I I wasn't again. It was just a little small part that I did in that. Yeah. Um, as I you know as I did until I got sort of better parts like in some other programs that I Yeah, did. I was, and then the the new statesman. You were in an episode of the new, and now I need to talk to you about that because Rick Mail is like an ultimate hero of mine. I've said it before, but when I've had people on the way, I've only ever cried twice at the death of someone famous, Oh, and so sad. one one was Howard Kendall, who used to manage Everton, and <laughs> and and the other one was Rick Mail. Because the I, I the, the, there was no one, no Oh, <laughs> it one was like him. Is that no, he was he was brilliant, and um, I really enjoyed working on that with him. yeah, Um, you know, I played Agnes Tebbit in it. yeah, So it was, <laughs> yeah, it was very it was funny, and he was just brilliant. He was a, a team player. yeah. No, And was he as was he as bonkers as I I really hope he was? <laughs> he was... Well, I think, well, he had that. He was like, he was really clever. So he Yeah. had that about him, you know. But um, but I just remember what we did because it was in a studio, like some of it was in in a studio that we did it. And um, and he come in and got it wrong. The first, you Right. know, he walks in and he gets it wrong. And then everybody, because we had a studio audience and they all laugh and everyone relaxes. He went... Yeah. always do that Yeah. now we're going to do it for real and then Right. he came in and did it and you know it was brilliant he was like I just had a really fun time with him he was Yeah. really easy to get on with and not sort of not so you know he was a big star Yeah. and you know so it he was no he was lovely and it Brilliant. was a you know. Brilliant. Okay, so then we'll move on then and talk about, you've mentioned it a couple of times already, 2.4 children, hmm uh, hmm which is what a lot of people might know you for uh, more so than, than Grange Hill. And you were in, you were in it right the way through, is that, that right? You were in I was in. Uh, uh, what happened was, I in the first series, I had one episode, Yeah. and I wasn't 
playing the part that I then got. Ah, oh, right, okay. So I did, um, I played, I was just in a supermarket with a lady called, actually, who's, who's done very well since, Nina Wadia. Was oh, right. Me. And um, we were just on the counter, and I, I think I wanted to be on, I was on meats, but I wanted to be on cakes. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> So and so and Belinda Lang is there, sort of like looking at us as if to say, "Can you just serve me?" Yeah. And that was it. So that was the scene I did, and then, um, then the boy who they had as the workmate for um, the dad, in yeah, it, um, they they didn't want to use him for the oh, nice. series, and um, and then they called me up and said, "We'd like you to play Christine, the plumber's mate." Yeah. And that's how it started. And then I was, she just sort of turned scenes around. And she, but she had really good lines. Yeah. So she was a stroppy character. She was a really good character to play. Yeah. And of, of course, Claire Buckfield and, and John yeah. Pickard were in that. We were both in Grangeville. Yeah. Yeah. And us, because she's got a twin sister. Yeah. And yeah. Also in Grangeville. Yeah, yeah. Claire, Claire and Julie have both been on. Yeah. Oh, have they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that must have been. Brilliant on 2.4 children because when you look as well, you know, as well as Anne Belinda Lang and, and Gary Olsen and Liz Smith, uh, oh, you know, well, like, so. like, but then the, all the other comedy legends that that, that turned really up on it. it as I well. Know, when like, you look at it, I know when I've looked at it, you know, you don't realize it when you're doing it, yeah, but now when you look back and you think, oh wow, yeah, everyone yeah. was in it, everyone, yeah. really. <laughs> I mean, you you must have had an absolute ball every single time. Yeah, we had a laugh. We had a laugh on it. Um, we were all very different. Right. You know, all the actors. We were all sort of come from different sort yeah. of arenas, really. But yeah, it was like it was good fun. Yeah. And uh, and you know, it was a shame we lost Gary. You know, yeah. because we were going to do. We were. They had written another series. Right. But then he unfortunately was too seriously ill, and then yeah. you know what happened, and uh, then my family replaced it. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's a just when you look. I say we we talk looking at the cast of two point four children, and and I've mentioned that, but Liz Smith was just like I, most people might know. Well, I certainly knew her more from the royal family than yeah. than anything else, and. Everyone just says, just like she started acting when she was fifty. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, amazing. Yeah, just, just, just brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Okay, and then you did things like London's Burning and the Bill, you know, classic, the classic British. Everybody sort of as an actor, you know, your staples, you know, they they yeah. sort of keep you going. So everybody got a taste of that one way or another. Yeah, but I knew, you know. All yeah. the actors that I knew, you you know. Uh huh. And did you when you're on London's Burning? John Alford was on it then. Did you get to yeah. work with him? No, I, but I know John Alford because oh, he, right. he went Anna Schurz. So yeah, I, oh, right. He's from Islington, so yeah. I you know we sort of all know each other, uh -huh. anyway, whether we work with each other or not. In a sense, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, and then you did fifteen stories high with Sean Locke. Now oh, I have to ask. Oh, I loved him. I have to ask you about him because everyone said he is like the comedian's comedian. Sean Locke was he? Yeah. Was he was he... just lovely. I mean, he supported Chelsea. That that wasn't lovely, but <laughs> um, but no, he was. You know, he was such a nice guy, and yeah. it was shocking when we lost him. And yeah, yeah fifteen stories a high was. Um, you know, I really enjoyed doing that as well. I did two. I did. An episode in both series. Oh, you had yes. two series. Yeah. yeah. Same character. Yeah. No, well, no, she wasn't. Well, she still was a housewife and she right. still had a moany husband kind of thing. But and, yeah. And yeah. was was he as funny as everyone says? Yeah, he yeah. was. I mean, it was just like natural, you know. Yeah, he was, he was very clever, you know. Yeah. Really and I really cool. sort of, he was down to earth, but he was, you know, like yeah. that, you know. Brilliant. And then, Green Wing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And okay. I, I, again, you know, I talked about the cast earlier on on, on Paradise Plus Bone, but that, that cast on Green Wing is like so many people cutting their teeth for a start in comedy. But who did you work with on that one? 
I only work. I can't even remember. You don't know. Uh, I was I, I was in the car park because I was. I just remember this. I I'm like getting in my car and I work in laundry. And he was he was a doctor and he's like, look. And I had a prime position where I'd parked Right. and he kept parked. Ah, And that's right. he's like he's like asking everyone what they do. So he's like, and I don't know what the character was. But he and I just shut the door and drive off with his hold on the top. Wasn't That um, was yeah. wasn't Mark Heath, was it? Um, I don't know. I think he'd probably remember if it was Mark Yeah. Heath, to be fair. Like um okay. So you were and then another one of my favourite comedy things is David Brent as Yeah. Ricky Gervais and you, you know, you were in the um Life on the Road in Yeah. that one, working in the in the office, being one of the many people who was getting pissed off by by him and it, Tom Tom Bennett's character, I can't remember his Yeah, name, but um yeah, yeah. I mean what 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 what's Ricky what was he like to, to work with as well like Well, he's, you know, he does everything. Yeah. So he not only like writes it, he he basically directs it, and you know he's involved in all of it. So, you know, he's he's pretty serious when you're working with him, you know, because he's he's got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. But yeah, it's like. And and the best thing about that job was like I've never worked on a production where you literally you start at nine and and by four thirty it's like and it's only Monday to Friday Right. uh, on a film. I mean it's amazing. That's how it works. Like clockwork work. They know what they're doing. He Yeah. knows what scenes he wants. He and he gets it. Yeah. You know, I've Yeah. never worked on something that is so you know efficient Yeah. really. Usually people want to take the shot again and take it this way, that way, backwards, forwards, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he just knew what he wanted. And <laughs> yeah. obviously, you know, and it works. Brilliant. So, I mean, yeah. I suppose you, you don't get that many accolades if you're going at it haphazardly, do you? Because, you know, what he does works, doesn't it? Oh, no, it definitely does. And, you know, his character, you know, it. <laughs> We, I mean, we had some laughs on it. We did. yeah. You know, like good fun, but um, yeah, it's but as I say, it was so efficiently done on a film set. I've never sort of worked on something that was so efficient. Yeah. All right, so okay. quite because when whenever you see him doing out whenever you see him on outtakes and stuff, he looks like sometimes like he's trying to get it wrong on purpose. Do you know what I mean? He's Oh, trying maybe, yeah, maybe that's that's the truth. I don't know. <laughs> you know, he's he's trying to make people corpse and stuff. I I'm I'm convinced of it when I watch him. Sometimes he's he's trying to make people corpse. Like okay, and then you know, you, you, you said earlier on, obviously most of the stuff we've done there is is comedy and You know, that includes the likes of stay staff let's flats and Yeah, zapped and yeah. and stuff like that. I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah. I, I was in makeup for five hours. So what character did you play in Zapped? Uh, uh, it, she was a uh, um. Uh, what was she? She was like you know, like um, she was an elf. She was that kind of um. Or like Uh, a hobbit type yeah, effort. she had, yeah, yeah, she was green. And uh, zigzag or whatever it was, nick knock and zigzag. Look, <laughs> look, knack, Yeah, it nook was. knack, nook knack, okay? nook knack. And um, and she had to have this sort of plasty voice. I had to do this silly voice. And, uh, but and but we, I had a big nose. They'd put uh, prosthetic ears on me. And as I say, it took hours Uh. <laughs> yeah. before we did it. But we had, I had really good fun on it. I really enjoyed doing it, and I'm, it was just a shame they didn't, um, they didn't get another series in the end. Yeah. And so you are saying there was was it just was it just one day of shooting or was it more Yeah, more it was yeah one right day of shooting, but it was quite a big part of that episode. right Like the family that he comes, he pretends that he's one of them, right but he's not, and then his hat falls off, and they see that he's not green underneath. right okay. And we'll go chasing after him. But it was, like, great. I mean, it was funny. And it yeah was, you know, I really enjoyed doing it. I didn't really enjoy five hours of makeup. But, um, no, but it was, um, yeah, it was it was good fun. No. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I need to talk about a program called Lee and Dean. Oh, yeah, Lee and Dean. Um, Well, Lee and Dean, um, Miles Chapman, I met on... Um,
on the Ricky Gervais film. All right. Because he played the manager in the office. All right, yeah. And when he was on it, he was like, oh, I'm I'm going to be maybe making this series um, called Lee and Dean is about two builders. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, he goes, oh, and he wanted to meet my brother because they had, you know. So I said, yeah. oh, yes, yeah. so I introduced um, them to my brother. And um, and then he said, oh, and then there's a part for you, Kim. So they put me in it. So that was like lovely. Yeah. I mean, was it is it was it strange working with Perry? Um, I didn't actually directly work with him. Ah, oh, right. Okay. He wasn't in any of my scenes. Ah, oh, right. So okay. I was yeah. I was with Ricky Grover. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Ricky yeah. Grover was my husband in it. Ah, oh, right. Okay. My dad of the lead girl in it. Yeah. And um, but no, so I, you know, I've worked with Perry on a on a couple of other things, oh, right. but, but they weren't television things. They were just other stuff. I've worked with him, yeah. but I haven't really worked with him properly. No, right, all oh, right, okay, okay. Um, so then away from TV, then so have you always? Actors, have you always has that always been your your sort of your main job, um, like theatre well, and stuff? I, yeah, I did a bit of theatre. I went up and worked at the Manchester Royal Exchange. I did the Crucible. Yeah. And and the Prime Miss Jean Brody, I did up there. I loved oh. it. Loved being up there. It was like fantastic. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I haven't done a lot of theatre. Oh, right. And then I did write um, with some other ladies. I did a cabaret when I was younger as well. We did, yeah. and they were comedy songs that we wrote and performed. Uh-huh. And we were called Wander and the Willy Warmers. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, um, and uh, so we did that for a little while. And, um, and also, you know, I've tried to write stuff. So, and I've just done a... I've done my own like hundred word storybook. This right. thing that, yeah, so I've got these like stories that a lot of people have got now, and um, so you know I write all the time as yeah. well as still going up for acting jobs. That's oh, right. too. I mean, in between acting, when I didn't, you know, because you don't always get acting yeah. work. Um, I did temping, and then I and I worked at Arsenal Football Club. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> And is that is is that your team then? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's well, a... so it was my dad's team, you see. So yeah. it was, and we're um, you know, I live in Islington. Yeah. So of course. And uh, yeah, so I work. For, so I used to uh, watch all the matches live and everything. So it was brilliant. You know, I got yeah. to really love football actually. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and um, so I did that, and I did work at the um, David Beckham Academy as well. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I have to ask then: Do you think? Uh, do you think they're going to do it this year, Arsenal? Hope so. Do you know what? As lo- and, and I, I make no apologies about this. As long as Liverpool don't win it, I don't. I know. You know, I don't, I don't I know, care. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, you know, football's a strange animal, isn't it? Isn't you think it? You're going to win, and then you <laughs> don't. And you know. You know, we, we we've just got four points back, and it, it was like Christmas when that happened. You know, we we got we got given four points after having the ten deducted from us. Uh, <laughs> so so we we got it was like Christmas the other day when when we found that out. But yeah, so as long as Liverpool don't win, you know, Arsenal or Man City can get up there. But obviously now that now that you've been on, I have to say I want Arsenal to win it, don't I? So well done, uh, well thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, can I ask then, are you still in touch with anyone that you were on Grange Hill with at all? Um, no. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, well, not that I was on Grange Hill with. All oh, right, okay. But someone who was on Grange Hill, I, I still see Mark Burdis and oh, his right. family and, you know, his partner's one of my best friends. So, oh, right. yeah, I still, yeah, I still see him. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm desperate to get him on this. By the way, so if you can, if you can I'll put a, I'll... put a word in for me, that'd be marvelous. If you I'll could. I'll <laughs> okay, so we are coming towards the end, Kim, and I have got same same questions I always ask everyone towards the end, um, and they're all Grange Hill related. Okay, but it's okay. not a it's not a quiz. Don't don't worry, it's not. It's not I won't I won't win. It's, <laughs> it's not a quiz. Don't worry. Okay, so 
it, recently, it's sort of in the last 12 months, there's been talk of the idea of a Grey Jill movie. You know, yeah. it's, uh, and Phil Redmond has written it, and um, Sarah Sugarman, who's going to be directing it. What do you think of the idea of a Grey Jill movie? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it'd be interesting. Uh-huh. I, I, mean, I don't know, you know, unless they, you know, they obviously the kids they bring back as the parents and then they get other kids, won't yeah. they? They get kids that are today. And uh-huh. it'd just be interesting. I don't know. So it's so different now, really, yeah. when you think kids and growing up now and mobile phones and the bullying and social media. Uh-huh. You know, I'm sure they've they've got great ideas. I yeah. know I've seen Sarah Sugarman's made a few films. Yeah. You know, so she's doing like lots of stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. It's okay. not like you've asked me to be in it though. Well, so. <laughs> that's what that's what my next question was going to be. If you were asked, no, no, would no. we would we would we see a return of Mary Johnson if you were asked? Um, it. Well, yeah, if, if, um, of course, if there was a, you know, obvious, I'm sure if the script is good and, yeah. you know, why wouldn't I do it if they asked me? Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, other than Mary Johnson, who was your favourite character in Grange Hill? Um, well, I used to like, I used to like Trisha Yates. Yeah. In it, you know. Yeah. Brilliant. I did used to like her in it. And, um, and I like Terry Sue Pat in it. I like Benny in it. You yeah. Know? He was a good character in it. Yeah. And obviously, to- I like, so yeah, three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so he if you. Was empty, wasn't he? Yeah. Know? Yeah. So- and so if you could, if you couldn't have played Mary, which other character then would you have liked to have played? Of course, I'd, I'd want her to have um, probably played. Probably, yeah. Uh, probably. Probably uh, Trisha's part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, had a main part in it. Yeah, I because you get all the good storylines. Yeah, cool. back then. but I, you know, I, but I would never be chosen as that because they went for it. You know, she was slim, blonde, I'm dark, uh-huh. short. <laughs> okay, so the final question then, Kim, is why do you think there is still such affection for Grange Hill? I think it was real. Yeah. It, it felt real. And and it was the and it was it was of its time as well for me when but it was like, you know, it was new and it was people could relate to it, I think. That's what it yeah. was. You know, it was about things that were happening to them. Yeah. Definitely. That they hadn't seen before, you know. It yeah. suddenly, you know, it brought things out in the open, I think. Yeah. I mean I, I always say that, you know, you talked earlier on about the fact that a lot of people didn't like it because of the, it was showing things that kids shouldn't have been seeing, and, and yeah. you know, and and I always say that was one of the reasons why my parents let me watch it. Yeah, because then you know it opened up, then it it gave the possibility of conversations and stuff, and you didn't, have, you know, it it wasn't awkward to have those conversations with your parents because they knew. Oh, you could discuss it, couldn't you? Yeah, like, and it was like, oh, that's what we do, you know. Yeah. And it was okay to be naughty. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. You know, really? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, so listen, it gave kids a hero, didn't it? Give yeah. kids heroes, really. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, people have always said you, you could look at a character and go, I know someone like that. I, You know, there's someone yeah. like that in my school or someone like that in my school as well. So, brilliant. Well, Kim, thank you so much for coming oh, yeah. on. You're so welcome. Coming on, it's it's been great talking to you. It really, really has, you know, not just about your time on Green Jail, but also the other things that you've done as well. So thank you once again so much for coming on. I've, I've really enjoyed it. So thank you. And to anyone that's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.